What's going on, family? Welcome to the Action from Square One YouTube. Of course, I am your host, Tyrone Gregory, as always. But today, I am honored. I am privileged because I have a special guest with me. The first guest, honestly, to be ever uh, co-hosted with me here on the YouTube channel. So it gives me great honor and a great pleasure to introduce the man himself, Mike. And Mike, well, before you go, Mike is 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 genius. I'm pretty sure he's going to try to downplay himself, but I am going to stop his lies right there. He is an amazing individual, which is how we met and why we met and why we connected. Because in keeping in line with starting a business with no money and no idea, Mike has an awesome company which helps with that. His company is called Business Insight and Ideas. Now think about that. Just in the title alone, you can tell that his focus is helping people with startups develop, understand, and grow business ideas. So again, I could go on forever talking about Mike because before we've been here on YouTube, we have talked so much uh, in person, Skype, you, uh, I'm about to say YouTube, this is our first YouTube, we ain't been on YouTube, <laughs> but we've had so much conversation and he's a genius, I love everything about this man, so without any delays, welcome to the YouTube platform of the Action Square One TV, Mike, welcome, it is such a pleasure to have you, man, I really truly appreciate you being here on the show, uh, as my first guest, man, this, this is going down in history. Yeah, so welcome. Please tell us all Thank about you. yourself. That was a great, in, a great intro. I mean, uh, I'm flattered. Thank you. <laughs> well, that was, so that yeah, was... uh, Tyrone did a great job of covering what I do. Um, but so I help aspiring entrepreneurs, uh, or I empower them to create better business ideas, validate, and then execute on that idea so they can build the company of their dreams. All right. And uh, so we do it a lot of ways, but I really like to focus in on the business idea. Um, there's a lot of things behind it, and uh, we'll be diving into that today. So I'm excited for that. Yeah, I'm excited too, because just just in general conversation, talking to Mike, um, you know, I I thought I knew a lot, but I guess I didn't after talking to Mike. So I, I'm excited here because in the video that I put out, you know, how to start a business with no idea, no money, it was really just the based around the psychological aspects of starting a business, getting over the psychological barriers, the lies we tell ourselves, oh, well, because I don't have this, I can't do that. So my solo part was just really uh, getting rid of that barrier so you can go ahead and get started and having Mike on the show today, he's going to break down to the granular how to really uh, go from idea to conception and, and really give you those actionable items, which is why I'm so excited to have him here on the show. He's put together a great slide. I know he's going to try to give me credit, but I'm going to be honest and transparent. <laughs> it was 100 percent on him. He said, what do you think about it? I was like, it's genius. So, Mike, let's let's get the slides going and show him what you got. It sounds good to me. All right, so uh, how to start a business with no money and no idea. And uh, as Tyrone, you touched on before, you did an excellent job of giving people the mindset and the tools to really think about this properly. And then today we're going to be diving into solidifying that idea, how or why your idea is important, uh, and how we can find and build that idea for you. Perfect, perfect. So as he said before, uh, I'm Mike Nusselbeck, founder of Business Idea Insight, and we provide educational and consulting services for aspiring entrepreneurs. And you can find me at businessideainsight.com. Uh, and just before we dive into the uh, details here, uh, you don't need to worry about taking notes on this video or anything. You can. We're going to have a link in the description, so you can just go to that link and sign up and we'll send you the slides for free. Oh, that's beautiful. See? Genius. Right right there. <laughs> I didn't even think about that, but he did. See? So glad you're here. Okay. I'm going I'm, to I'm hush and let you do your thing. Perfect. So I just wanted to touch on uh, why your business idea is important. Uh, if we're going to be talking about business ideas, I think it's a really solid place to start because you need to really have a foundation of where we're going to take this and why we're taking so much time to think of a good business idea. So let's start there. Okay. Perfect. But first... I want to start with this quote because I think it really sums up why ideas are important. And it's a quote by Jim Rohn is that ideas can be life changing. 
And sometimes all you need to open the door is just one more good idea. Oh, and man. I just love this quote. I don't know about you, Tyrone, but I feel like it really resonates with the importance of the idea as well as the execution because it will open up a lot more doors for you. You know, I, I have to agree, man. I, I'm honestly like getting chills just reading that because the idea, just one more good idea, it, 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 it really resonates because as a as an entrepreneur, I, I'll, I'll be the first to admit that I have failed more times than I have succeeded. But if I had stopped at that one failure, I would never have succeeded. You know what I'm saying? So that that right there, man, is is is, is perfect. Again. That makes two of us. I would have uh, I would have been long gone in the dust if I didn't exactly. persevere through my failures. Exactly. Exactly. Another shocking statistic of. I'm going to present here and why it's related to your business idea is 65% of small businesses fail within the first five years. Uh, that's a significant number. I mean, that's more than half, over half. So that's, if you're going to start a business, it might fail in the first five years and there's over a half percent, over 50% chance of that. And that's a lot. So that's a big risk you're taking on. So it's really important that you take the time to make sure your business idea is solid and has all the characteristics it needs to explode because you'll end up like a statistic if you don't. <laughs> explode. I like that. <laughs> oh, man. And so here is a basic equation I made just so we can uh, get a start and wrap our heads around where the business idea comes from, how it's put together to create a company and all that stuff. So it's a pretty basic one here. You'll see the business idea plus your resources, which will be your time, your capital, uh, your team members, um, and plus your customer equals your profit. Okay. And I feel like this sums up a company really well because without one of these, you're not going to be able to make money or you're not going to be able to execute or you're not going to be able to even bring your business idea to fruition. I have to agree with you there 100%. 100%. So now that we sort of have a grasp of why business ideas are important um, and the, the reason you need to be spending time on it, I want to dive into the process and about discovering business ideas because I feel there's a lot of entrepreneurs out there or aspiring entrepreneurs that, you know, they spend time on Google, they're out thinking about ideas, um, but they're either missing key characteristics or they don't know where to find problems to solve. I mean, there's just a lot of things that we're going to be coming here, dropping some value bombs, and uh, it's going to be really getting to the process. You guys can go through the whole thing, um, even on this YouTube video, and you can go from no idea to an idea here. It's beautiful, beautiful. So here's the basic business idea equation. So first, you'll see we start with a problem, and then we have the value you can bring, and then the business model. And I'm just going to run through this a bit. Okay. So it's really important to have a problem uh, I don't know if you ever started to, or I've started uh, a business in the past that didn't actually solve a real problem, and that was a complete failure. I mean, I thought it was a problem people had, but it was only a perceived problem in my eyes, and that is something to take note as well, because if it's a problem in your eyes, and your eyes only, no one's going to buy your product, and you can, you can uh, go back to the drawing board from there. Again, I'm going to raise my hand because I am guilty. <laughs> the first business I ever started, I started with the intent just so I could say that I'm the CEO. Right. I didn't even consider the problem or a problem. I'm just going to start a business. As soon as I start this company and incorporate, money's going to fall in my hand. And just, boy, <laughs> boy, did that not happen. <laughs> and that's an unfortunate reality for a lot of people. So they got to be solving problems. Yeah, definitely agree. So the second part here is the value you can bring. Uh, this is extremely important since we're talking about starting a business with no money and no idea. You're going to have to bring a lot to the table, to the market, uh, in a way that they're going to want to exchange money for that value. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be diving into things such as your skills, your strengths, your talents, um, any of additional resources, and any other team you can bring to the market that you can provide value for people. Good. Okay. And then the last piece to tie it all really together for the business idea is your business model. And what I love about business models is you can have a, a simple um, problem and solution, problem and value solution duo, and it's going to change how you completely do business, 
bring in money, spend money, operate your life if you change your business model. Um, and we'll be diving that into here soon. Okay. Okay. Then I guess I'll save my questions towards the end then. Okay. Perfect. So the first I want to touch on is the problem and how to solve, how to find problems to solve. Um, I find there can be a lot of different ways to find problems, but many people don't even know them. So let's just get into it. And the first one uh, I'm going to present here is the news. And I love finding problems from the news, firstly, because the information the news talks about is generally about a, a group of people, uh, and it's about a problem of that group. And so this gives you a sort of... Uh, a problem that's validated on a group basis and not an individual basis because you can run into problems if you find a you can run into problems with your problem if you find a, a problem that is related to only one person's opinion because if you take that and try and execute on it I mean you could be missing a whole nother picture there from a bunch of other people man that is I'm shocked and I almost want to sound like I said, I, I thought I knew everything. And, and, and this is confirmation how when I thought I knew everything until I met Mike, because I had never, ever considered the news, which is crazy because what you just said made me think like the, the whole reason I never considered the news is because I avoid the news on purpose because all it talks about is the problems in the world. But yeah. That's that's genius. I mean, if that, if that is the source that all it talks about is the problems, that is like just taking your business fishing pole and just going and dipping into the news lake and you can guarantee get a bite on the product like that. That right there is beautiful. I would have never considered that. Yeah, that's that's a perfect example there, Tyrone. And um, to add to that, there's news published almost by the minute these days. So it's always refreshed. There's always new stuff you can find and read up on. Wow. Wow. That, that, that is, that is good. Amazing. Good. Amazing. So the second one here is my second favorite. It's the uh, consulting firm research. And this one is sort of hidden to people. Not many people know consulting firms even produce free research, but if you type into Google um, global consulting firms, you'll get a nice list from there. You can go to each one's website and they do offer free research that they wow. put out to the public. Uh, one, they do this because they want to attract clients, and this is a good way to do it. And two, they like to show their expertise. Um, but this is free information. They spend thousands of dollars researching trends in the markets and different um, different industrial trends and different technology trends, really anything you can think of about the business world, they're researching it, and it's free. So that's one of the other problems, I love, or other places I look to love, find problems it's, it's really solid research and it's reliable. Again, another one I would have never thought of. I, honestly, I've you know, I've heard of the news, granted, but <laughs> companies of, you know, like I said, a big magnitude doing free research and free white papers. I wouldn't have thought that, but, but it makes sense. That's like uh, ketchup companies creating recipes that would require you to use their product. Right. You know, they they give you these free recipes, these amazing recipes. But one of the key ingredients is their particular product, man. That another genius point for Mike. <laughs> Thank you. And a, a third one here, not many people think of is uh, city council meeting minutes. So this is a, a wonderful place to find problems if you're looking to solve a really niche problem in your area, such as your city or town. Mm. Um City councils meet, I think, monthly or quarterly, and they always keep track of what, what was said, who was said what, what was brought up, what policies are passing in the area, bylaws, all that stuff. And all that can feed into, uh, they're all related to problems in the world. So they can all feed into a business idea and help support that. Wow. And what is really interesting about the city council meeting minutes is they don't no one really talks about it until stuff is actually implemented. So this is the perfect time to go into those meeting minutes and see what's going on before anyone else is acting on it. Wow. Wow. I, I'm not going to keep embarrassing myself and, and continue to say all these things <laughs> I had no idea of, but I'm going to agree with you on that one. Yes. Sweet. So the fourth one here is uh, product and service reviews. And Tyrone actually gave me this idea, genius idea. 
so you can go on to any product or service you're looking to enter. Um, type it into Amazon. You can pull up the product and uh, there'll be reviews. And the reviews will tell you a lot of things. You want to look for both the five-star reviews um, because it will tell you what's great about it and what you need to keep in the product as well. And you can look at the one-star reviews. And this, this says the problem about the uh, product. And this is where you can take the product, change it, and implement those changes to solve that problem. Oh, finally, I got one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right on me. All right. <laughs> so the fifth one's probably a little obvious. It's asking friends and family. Um, but I find many people don't do this, even if they're looking for problems to solve. Friends and family are a great place to start because you have that trust. So they're willing to tell you almost anything. Um, you're, they're willing to sit down with you, spend that time. Whereas if you're approaching strangers to find problems, you might have a hard time getting people's um, attention to speak with you and uh, to really dive into the details of what that problem is. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I mean, that's usually the, the first place I go is friends and family, get validation first. Then from there, I take it to different markets and take it to other uh, places just to kind of see, send out a survey or something like that. But yeah, I always start with friends and family. Excellent point there. And then uh, the last one here sort of uh, follows up with the asking friends or family, but this goes into more talking with strangers. So this would be uh, phoning or emailing people in the industry where you want to enter and just asking about their problems. Uh, many great business to business companies have been started this way by uh, a person surveying the industry, finding a unique problem and then attacking it to solve it. Well, so so in this one here, you're, you're pretty much like to like like cold calling almost, um, but just kind of like reaching out so far. Let's say you've looked at all of these options you've given us and you've come up with a list of potential problems and you look at the industries in which they impact and you kind of reach out to the businesses in that industry and just kind of, uh, you know, maybe say, hey, what what problems are you experiencing with this or something of that nature? That's exactly it. And that would take it full circle, Tyrone. That would be, uh, if you did that, that would really solidify the problem because you'd have the uh, research from before supporting that as well as the actual people's opinion. And you can put that together to really see a problem where you can solve. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. So the next piece is the value you can bring. And I want to start off with our resource assessment because that's so important to know. Without your resources, you're not going to be able to execute. And without knowing what you have available, you're not going to know if you need team members or if you need to go out and uh, acquire capital or you need to go get some different skills or whatever. So the first thing on your resource assessment is your passions. Tyrone already touched on this and I'm touching on it again because it's so important. You need to be passionate about your idea. Oh, yes. um, Steve Jobs was a huge believer in this and uh, his company is super successful now. Um, <laughs> but you need to be able to be passionate about it because there's going to be periods when you're not making money. And if you're only motivated by money, your business idea is going to die really quickly. I've talked to a lot of entrepreneurs on this and they've said their ideas have died because they've gone too long without cash flow and they just couldn't keep it up. They weren't passionate enough to really stick through. Man, that, uh, and, 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 and like you said, I, people who know me know that is the main, that, that is like the, the main thing for me. You know, there's a company called the intent project. I, I don't know if you've heard of them, okay, yeah. um, where they have uh, their whole brand is creating jewelry that has one word on it. And that word describes your intent or that word is your intent, which to me describes your purpose. And mine was purpose because your, oh. your, your purpose equals your passion. I, I don't have the necklace on now, but in a lot of the videos you see, I got that necklace on and the word on there is purpose because without understanding your purpose, without having a passion, Man, there there is nothing that will happen without that. So that to consider that a resource, I honestly I never considered it a resource just because I was so passionate about passion. <laughs> but putting it as a resource is excellent because it is your number one resource. So I'm so glad that you put that first, man. That's yes, excellent awesome. point right there. And the second part is your strengths. 
So these can range anything from your analytical abilities, your uh, amazing communication skills, um, your strength in learning. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of strengths in there. And making sure to know what you're good at and what you aren't at is very important because you're going to want to use your strengths in the value you present to the market. So, for example, I have a strength in business ideas. This is why I wanted to start my, uh, this company. And this helps me bring value to the market. Without my knowledge and background, I wouldn't be able to bring the value to the market that I can and no one would pay me anything. Right. Um, so knowing what your strengths are is extremely important. Agreed, agreed. Um, strength, what about uh, uh, like if somebody, how can I say, what's, what's that book, Strength Finders? Yes, yeah, Strength Finder 2.0. It's one of my favorite there assessments is, yeah. at all time. There it is, yeah, Strength Finder 2.0. Okay. So the third resource here is your time. And a lot of people don't really consider time because they think they can just work on their business whenever, but it is extremely important to know how much time you can commit. For example, if you wanted to start uh, a business-to-business -business company where you had to uh, do cold calls during office hours to get leads, then this might not be a great business idea for you if you work full time and you need to sustain that job because you your boss is not going to like you making those cold calls for your company on the other company's hours. Exactly. <laughs> oh, man, you might be a 100% entrepreneur before you know it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know exactly. Okay. <laughs> The next part of the resource assessment is your skills, and this sort of ties into strengths, but I like to separate it because there's two types of skills. It's your hard and soft skills. So your hard skills are, you know, your um, proficiency in programming or your proficiency in woodworking or uh, photography. Those are your hard skills, and those are developed. Um, your soft skills are more in line with your personality. And those have to do with your communication abilities, okay. uh, your creative thinking, um, you know, skills that really uh, you can't pick up as easy. You can't read a textbook to learn. They're more developed by interacting with people um, or developed from just personal experiences and living how you like to live. Okay, so more like your more natural skills, things that come to you naturally. Yeah, okay. exactly. Okay, okay, I get it, I get it. So the fifth one here is your friends and family connections. And I can't stress this enough, even though I stress a lot of the other ones. This is really important if you're starting a business with no money, uh, because your friends and family are going to take you a long way with their support they give you. So knowing if your friend um, is able to help you out with your business, or maybe you're, uh, you have some family members that know how to register a business and you don't know how to do that, Taking account of those things will really speed up the process um, and really make sure they can support you, too. Wow. Yeah, I mean, I, I really have to agree with that because one of the most important things, what you said, you stress and outside of passion, which is something that I stress, is your network. I'm always yeah. talking about, you know, the the circle of people that we keep. You know, you have to have the right circle of friends and you're absolutely right. But I've known a lot of times people who um have been in the same circle as an individual for years but never knew the skill that they had or the skill or quality that they could bring to the table and they would always go outside of that circle to uh to get what they needed and, and, and it just really uh blew my mind which is really started making me focus and asking questions well what exactly do you do so i'll know yeah I'll be a resource or not yeah I think um, there's a quote, your your net worth is your network. Yeah. And that really touches on your connections there. So that a hundred percent agree with that. And your sixth uh, the sixth point in the resource assessment here is your access to capital. Uh, this is going to be really important. You really have to take into account what you have personally in the bank, um, what your friends and family are willing to invest in your company or loan you as well as any uh, small personal loans you're thinking about for your business, as well as that. Um, another really good point to, uh, for this is think about if you're going to raise some money. There's a lot of resources in venture capital and crowdfunding. Um, these are huge accesses to capital. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, as much as we 
with life or not to be, you can't make money if you don't have money. So yeah. <laughs> access to capital is majorly important, majorly important. But I, I didn't really think about the uh, venture capitalists and, and things like that, but that's good. So appreciate that. For sure. And uh, just the last one here, miscellaneous resources. I just wanted to throw this in here for you guys to get your brains going because um, there can be a lot of awesome resources that you have at your disposal for free. So, for example, here in Vancouver, um, I signed up to the library and I can go down to the library for free. And they have all studio equipment for recording, for editing software, for they have Adobe, uh, Photoshop, Premiere Pro. You know, you name it, all these expensive softwares that I can use at my disposal for my business. And this is a crazy resource that has helped me a lot. And I wouldn't have thought of that if you don't think outside the box here. In a library? Yeah, library. Wow. I mean, <laughs> wow. Okay. Go back over. Yeah, because most libraries, I mean, I see them with, with <laughs> computers now, but nothing like that. You know, that's that's wow. Yeah, so, I mean, you just got to go out and see what's out there. There's a lot of free stuff. I guess so. Yeah, I may have to go check my local libraries and see what's going on. Okay. So I just wanted to touch on this one point before we jump into the business model part. And this is a, a stat I got from uh, KPMG, the accounting firm. Uh, it's $127 billion was raised from venture capital funds globally in 2016. And that's one year alone. So I just wanted to show you that there is no... There is no shortage of money out there. If you need to raise it, someone will give it to you. You just have to go find those people. Wow. Well, I mean, if you can just take one half, well, I'm not going to say one. You could take half of a percent. Yeah. $127 billion and have enough venture capital to start your, your, your uh, business adventure. Exactly. I mean, that's a lot of money. That is a lot of money. That is a, a heck of a lot of money. But I will say this, um, you know, in order to get interest from a venture capital uh, a person who's going to fund you, you everything that Mike has talked about this far, you have to ensure that that is part of the business idea process, because most venture capitalists, they're looking to get a return on their investment. So, if they don't see you have any passion for your business, they don't see that you put in any research, any time or any effort that you have not done anything to grow the business. They won't even bother with you. Thank you for touching on that, Tyrone. That's such an important uh, piece of this, too, because venture capitalists are ruthless and you need to have make sure your business idea has these things. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And if uh, you don't really want to sell your soul and... <laughs> Go for venture capital. Uh, you can go for crowdfunding. And oh, man. Hopefully last year there was almost a billion dollars raised. And these are on sites like uh, Kickstarter, GoFundMe, Indiegogo. So this is another viable option to find money too. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it may not be a billion, but $755 million is still a lot of money. Oh, yeah. Still a lot of money. Man, yeah. That's, wow. Again, that's... So... The excuses for not raising capital has now been removed from the table. <laughs> Done. <Yep. laughs> so let's dive into the business model, the last piece of this equation for the business idea. So we're going to be touching on choosing the right business model for yourself okay. and what are the types of business models we can use. Okay. So choosing the right business model for yourself and for your business is going to be really important because uh, different business models will drive different goals and results for your business idea. So to align this, your business model should align with your personal goals and as well as your financial goals. So I have a personal goal. I don't want to be working uh, 100 hours a week. So I can't choose a business model that is extremely demanding with my time. I have to choose a business model that would allow me to um, free up some of my time to say sell products instead of um, doing a 100% service-based business, which involves uh, me my investing my own time. Okay, okay. Another thing to think about too is how you want to live. So if you're gonna be starting a product-based business and you need to be in the office every day, you need to be going down to the shop every day to make sure the product's working well. Um, if there's those demands in that business with that business model, 
and you're not wanting to go down to the shop every day and be in the office every day, you'd rather be sitting on the beach working on your business on your laptop, then you'll need to go back to the uh, writing board and change your business model completely. But it can be done. No, and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very glad that you touched on that because what I've noticed, um, especially when talking to a lot of startups and talking to a lot of young entrepreneurs myself, you know, the... the the main focus is the end result, meaning that, you know what, I'm starting this business to have more free time or I'm starting this business because I do want to sit at the beach and work from work from a laptop and not really knowing that. OK, yeah, that's the end result. But in order to get there, you may have to work 100 hours a week. You may have to go down to the office often every day even on christmas and holidays you know yeah. so I'm, I'm very glad that you mentioned that because it's important to know that going in don't don't let it be a shock to you when you get into it and then discover oh this isn't what i wanted because now you've just wasted valuable time valuable resources and if you don't have passion then you probably won't do it again yeah exactly you know very glad you touched on that good and uh so we can dive into some examples here so you guys have a, a good understanding of some different models you can play with and incorporate to your idea uh so the first one i want to touch on here is advertising and uh, a great example of this household name facebook yeah. they do billions in ads they i don't even know how much they do but they're a perfect example of an advertising platform okay no, no. When you say uh, so, under types of business models and advertising platforms, so we're looking at where a, a majority of the profit comes from in these particular models. Yes, exactly. So on uh, Facebook, it could be advertising. You know, to take it to uh, a real world example, we can look at the billboard model. Um, they sell advertising. Oh yeah, yeah, that's true. Okay. Yeah. And the second one here, I thought was really interesting, is uh, the virtual goods. Um, Zynga is a perfect example. They're a partner of Facebook. Um, so, for example, they create uh, games on Facebook that you can go on to, such as Texas Hold'em Poker, um, and you can buy virtual goods such as chips or uh, fake drinks um, with real money. Really? And, uh, yeah. <laughs> like, okay, <laughs> fake drinks, or you like, well, I, I, I can't even wrap my head around it, but I'm sure because it's offered people buy it they do sure. i mean wow. yeah and uh they make a lot of money they they're a billion dollar company too so wow wow okay and the uh third one here is a subscription model and i wanted to give a different um example than a lot of the subscription based models they all use netflix which i think is a good example <laughs> but um i think there's a lot of other examples because not everyone's going to start a business like netflix um, so I wanted to use my uh, friend's company, Bambrush, and they do a subscription-based tooth toothbrush service business. Really? So you sign up, and they will ship you a new toothbrush every three months um, because the three-month period is when you should throw your new one out due to bacteria and the bristles getting worn. Um, so you just sign up, and they send you a new one every three months uh, so you don't have to worry about going down to the store and getting a new one. You know what? Uh, you tell your friend, man, that is genius. Congratulate him on that. I'm going to go look into that myself, man, because we being a family of five, um, you know, it's it's hard when we go in, in, into the stores to try to find the brushes. The toothbrushes that we use is not always can find the same bristle uh, softness or medium or hardness or you can't find the same model you used to use it and sometimes you you forget to go change mm -hmm. it every three months as 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 uh, um, recommended so that that's that right there really solved the problem I bet you saw the problem not even a lot of people didn't even know it was a problem until it was brought to their attention but yeah you 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 tell the bam brush good. Awesome, I will. He'll like that. Yeah. Shout, and, uh, shout out so, to Bambrush right there. Shout out. Shout out to Bambrush. Awesome. <laughs> so the fourth business model here is a, a really unique one, I thought, is the peer-to-peer. -peer. So 
Uh, a great example of this is the lending club. So you, what you can do is you can upload your money to the lending club and you can loan your money to other people. Um, so you don't have to go to the bank. You don't have to, you can put this money up and gain a solid interest rate. Um, or you can use this as a person that needs money and get that money when the bank wouldn't necessarily loan it to you. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Uh, again, another problem, Saul, because I just recently read an article that really talks about how the banking system has not, uh, how can I say, has not really conformed to the new type of businesses that we have that are involving. So their old measurements of whether they're going to get their return on their investment is kind of outdated. And so they're or they are not lending as much money to the the newer entrepreneurs because the newer entrepreneurs are doing things that the bank is unfamiliar with, but they're still solving a problem. So yeah. to have something like that is amazing. Truthfully speaking, that, that is absolutely amazing. Yeah, it's great. I mean, for someone like myself, if I wasn't able to get a loan in a time of need, the lending club would be able to come through. So oh, yeah. even in time like that, it's kind of cool. And the last one here is uh, a really generic one. I just wanted to give you guys because it's low cost. And that's what we're going after here is low cost. So the the broker business model is sort of um, like if you were uh, a dealer for selling items down into the United States or up into Canada, you'd be an international broker for those items. Wow. And what you can do is you can charge commission um, to provide advice and facilitate services. A lot of brokers, they'll, uh, they're usually involved in like as a middleman in a transaction. Okay. So they'll help find a buyer and a seller and bring them together. Oh, okay. Okay. Nice. Yeah. So putting it all together, you know, I gave you some ideas where you can find problems and how we can find your value that you can bring to the market and then how we can tie it all together with the business model, which really brings you your business idea. There it is, man. That, that, yeah. <laughs> That right there. I mean, at this point, there is no excuses, none <laughs> for you not to be able to really start your business right now, right now, this very second. As a matter of fact, in the comment below, we, Mike and I, are going to challenge everybody to leave us a comment and let us know what business you have now started. Simple. Do it. Yes. So now that we know how to develop a business idea properly, I want to go and into the common mistakes people make because you can do what we just did and it, it work out, but you, there's also going to be times when it doesn't work out and there's going to be things that you've missed. And so I want to cover those to make sure that you're fully covered. Okay. So the first one is rushing it. I mean, we all want to make money. We all want to uh, launch our businesses and be successful. And when it comes to your business idea, a lot of people just rush it and get it out the door. Um, and I think this can firstly exhaust your resources really quickly if you just rush it and it's a bad idea. Um, it can also demotivate you if you rushed it and you weren't passionate about it or you didn't take the time to validate it properly. Um, it just won't be a good time. Yes, yes. And that's something right there that you mentioned. And maybe we can do another video about that, like how to really – validate your idea man because i did and everything that you just said was a mistake that i did tried to create a product put it out there rushed it didn't validate it man and it, and it was very discouraging you know and it was like ah, till this day is just still a side project maybe, maybe i'll do it again one day i don't know Yes, for sure. And for you listeners out there, make sure you subscribe to uh, Tyrone's channel here because we will be doing another video about uh, validation. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Me and Mike will do a lot of videos. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and we've touched on this multiple times, but I need to bring it up again is if you don't have any passion involved, this will be another major mistake. And so the third one here is if your business idea does not solve a real problem and this is actually a huge reason why there's that 65% of businesses failing in five years is because they're not actually solving a real problem. What they'll do is they'll think that the problem they are solving is a real problem, but really it might only be a problem of their own 
or it might just be a made up thing that they think it's an issue, but it's not really because they didn't spend the time to validate it. Um, or they didn't spend the time to look into those areas we pointed out in the first place, which was finding reliable problems. That's true. That's true. Because if, if there is no no problem to solve, I mean, there really is no business at all, no, I mean, period. If there's yeah. no problem, you got no business exactly. going there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And a fourth one here is disregarding your own strengths. And because we're starting a business with no money and no idea, if you don't have your strengths incorporated into the process, uh, you're going to have a really hard time um, satisfying clients and executing on the things you said you were going to do because you'll have to learn along the way. And you may be a really good learner. You might be really quick at it, but I guarantee you, you'll bring a lot more value to the market. You'll make people way more happy if you just go with your strengths and not what you think you want to do. You know, again, I'm glad that you brought that up because I noticed a lot of people and I'm always raising my hand to be transparent because a lot of these things happened to me in my beginning journey. I focused so much on my weaknesses. I gave no, no kind of attention to my strengths. I didn't play on my strengths at all. I was too busy trying to build up my weaknesses. And then a um, good friend of mine, uh, John Phillips, you know, he, he, he put it out there like, you know, don't worry about your weaknesses. You find other people that are strong in the area where you weak, focus on your strengths and you'll develop. And when I started doing that, I mean, the whole spectrum changed for me, you know. So so again, don't that that is very a very big mistake to disregard your own strengths. Focus on what you're strong at, because nine times out of 10, that's why people buy the product, to be honest with you. Exactly. Yeah. And that segues into the fifth uh, mistake people make here um, is having no team. Like you said before, Tyrone. If you got a weakness, you need to find team members for that. So if you're disregarding your own strengths, you're not going to be able to know where you need to fill the gaps yes. and you're not going to bring in a team and you're not going to be able to execute as efficiently as you would if you didn't have a team or mentorship or support network behind you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 100% agree with that. And the last one here is the resource assessment. So a lot of people make a lot of mistakes people make is they don't find out how much time they can input into their business. They don't find out what they're passionate about or what their uh, hard and soft skills are. They might not even find out if they have any access to capital and you need money to uh, create money. So that's a real big killer right there. That is true, man. Just, just looking at this overall list of mistakes, I can say that I am bad in 100. <laughs> <laughs> just say it but it's 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 a beautiful thing man when you recognize it and then fix it so if you're like me and you're looking at this entire screen and you're saying man i've made every one of them mistakes or you could even say i've made every one of them mistakes yesterday don't feel bad it doesn't matter if you made this mistakes as long as you correct it and now that you know do so, exactly and you know Someone like myself, I'm not perfect either. When I started my business, I didn't have a team behind it. And I struggled for the longest time trying to find, you know, advice or people to help or, uh, you know, to fill in where I didn't know these things or certain knowledge gaps I had. And uh, I do have mentors now and it makes a dramatic difference having that team there. It does. It does. I mean, if, if I can uh, just, just be honest, you know, the relationship that Mike and I have now, you know, he has definitely helped me giving me ideas to help me brainstorm and further uh, scale my business upward just just based on some of these things. So it's good to have a team. As, as Mike said earlier, your net worth is based on your network. So get out there and, and, and get that everything. Definitely. Yeah, exactly. So now that we've really covered all the juicy stuff, I just wanted to uh, take a second to touch on a moment how um, Tyrone and myself can help you. Um, sometimes you need a little hand holding going through these processes. Uh, so I just want to let you guys know that we're there for you and uh, show what we have to give you. 
Exactly. You know, always, you can always reach out to us, always find us, even though um, this, this year is going to be on the the uh, Action from Square One YouTube channel. If you leave a comment here for Mike, he'll he'll get it. If you shoot Mike an email, I'll get it. You shoot me an email, he'll get it. I mean, we share uh, the information. So don't ever, if you need to reach out to Mike, let me know. He'll get the message to get back to you. So definitely know that we are here for you. Perfect. So yeah, just to uh, touch on the level one consulting I sometimes give for clients. Okay. Um, we go into that personal assessment, which we talked about. Uh, I have, well, we use the uh, Strength Finder 2.0 assessment with that, as well as many other personal assessments that I've developed. Okay. And then we go into the problem discovery, uh, like we touched on before. So we really find a problem that the person is passionate about that they want to solve. And we also take a very broad approach. So we're going to use all the tools I gave you at the start. We're going to find as many problems as we can because we want to have a lot of opportunity to choose from. Mm. And when you have that ability to choose, you can really narrow it down and find one that really suits you well. Yeah, okay, perfect. And then the last part here for the level one is the solution design. So this part's really fun. It's where we sort of uh, go out into the market, see what's out there, see the competitors, and create a solution that has a unique value proposition that solves that problem we talked about also incorporating all the personal stuff in, from the assessment there. Okay. So that way you have a business that you can execute on with your own skills that solves a problem with a business model that matches your lifestyle and your goals. Cool. Cool. And just to uh, run through, I offer some more levels above that if people want to take it an, up a notch. Um, so level two here is I use this venture intelligent quotient. And this is a proprietary research-based tool developed from uh, entrepreneurs and venture capitalists all around the world. And they use this to validate their business ideas. So there's 15 different points we go into and we dive in using this tool to really see where we can improve upon or pivot and adjust for this idea. Or it might, we might just scrap it because we might get a score that's too low for the long run. Mm, okay. And then, yeah, the last two pieces here of level two really tie into the uh, VIQ, which is the market testing. So we'll go into the market, test your idea, test the solution, make sure there's um, a market for it, people want to buy it. And from there, we can make any pivots or adjustments. So if we get feedback that is different than what we initially thought, then we can make a little change and pivot. Um, and then you're ready to go unless... You're, we can jump into level three of the consulting. And this is the most comprehensive one. It covers all level one and two. But then we really get into the meat of things about executing, which is really important. Um, so I'll work really closely with you to develop an implementation guide and business plan. And it's going to touch on all the following, you know, your marketing, your business development, uh, your revenue breakdown, how you're going to make that money, uh, any financial projections and costing related to that. So you're well aware, two years down the road, there might be some profits coming in. We can map that out mm. and we can test it against our market testing and our VIQ knowledge. Man, that right there, that is amazing. All of that <laughs> is you. amazing. I know, yeah. Now, notice how I said Tyrone and Mike, but that was just all Mike. Tyrone has nothing to do with that. That is all Mike, and that is amazing. That, well, yeah, wow. I mean, you really can almost do it for them with all of that. That's the idea. If people like to uh, that hand held in process or um, they don't want to tackle it on their own at the start, then, I mean, I can do it all for them and uh, send them off to the races. All right. Cool. And so just to touch on, um, this is where we can help people. You may already know watching Tyrone's videos, he can help people worldwide. Um, but I just wanted to show we help people worldwide, too. I've got some clients in India, uh, Eastern Canada, uh, Eastern United States. So really anywhere. It's exciting times. Ah, Mr. Worldwide, huh? Okay. <laughs> yeah. So thank you. I also want to say thank you for making it through this video. I hope you really uh, got some value out of this and you're on your way to thinking of business ideas. And 
Thank you for Tyrone for having me. This has been a great experience sharing with your audience. No, oh, Mike, man. I mean, I am uh, again humbled, honored. I thank you for, you know, re replying to me and saying, yeah, let's do something. Let's connect. Let's make this happen. Let's, you know. So this 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 right here, man. You designed this from beginning to where we are here. So all of this really goes to you, man. I really truly appreciate you honoring me being a guest here on my show so much love to you thank you and yeah you can uh, find tyrone at action from square one.com or on twitter action fso and you can find myself at business idea insight.com or on twitter as well at biz idea insight yeah yeah, I and, might... uh, yeah so... just to end on a note here mm -hmm. um if you want to download all these slides that uh, i made for you guys today you can visit businessideainsight.com forward slash AFSO download. All right. And and uh, I will show my phone, but I've already went there and downloaded it. <laughs> so I am there. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So, yeah, there you have it. Go do it. Get busy. Get the download and be good to go. All righty, family. Man, that was absolutely amazing again big shout out to mike nestleback make sure to go to his website check him out businessideainsight.com that was an absolute amazing presentation and here it is you know i'm always be real and be transparent with you if at this point after going through that presentation that mike just did for us if you honestly cannot find a way to come up with an idea to start you a business that I'm going to say from my heart, maybe entrepreneurship just isn't for you. And that's just me saying it with love, saying it with compassion, because the journey of entrepreneurship is hard, it's difficult, it's challenging. And if you don't have the passion, as we talked about in this presentation, if you don't have that passion, you're going to waste a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of resources, burn a lot of bridges. Mike laid out everything in his presentation. And so from here, you should be able to start your business with no idea and no money. And if you can't do it, don't feel bad. Entrepreneurship isn't for everybody. Again, Thank you, Mike. We appreciate you coming on to the Action from Square One TV channel, blessing us with this information. We appreciate you. And always, if you ever need me, make sure to leave a comment below. Uh, shoot me an email. Look me up on Twitter. Find me on Facebook. And from there, I will reach back out to you and make it happen. It's a beautiful year. You're a bunch of beautiful people. I love you. I know Mike loves you. That's why he put his heart and effort into this. And so from there again, we thank you. We appreciate you watching. Make sure you subscribe because I'm pretty sure after this, we're going to do some more. So you guys take care. Peace.